Breaking news flash just in, all the way back from May 1939, it is the first appearance of the Batman, sporting what just might be the best cape on a McFarlane Batman ever. It would be almost downright criminal for McFarlane to go through the entirety of 2024 with the DC Multiverse brand and not honor the first appearance of the Batman, as he was formerly called back then, after 85 long years within the pop culture zeitgeist. And finally, here he is in the 7-inch scale DC Multiverse format. And granted, it's not necessarily going to be the most well-received iteration of the Batman, especially since this is, in fact, the first appearance of the Batman. It's only through the transformations he underwent when it came to different directors, different artists, different metamorphosis that he has done in almost a full century of being in the eyes of comic readers, of movie watchers, of gamers, etc. Batman has just become basically what he set out to do was to become more than just a man, a legend, Mr. Wayne, a symbol. But prior to that, he was simply just something that you would pick up and read for about, what was it, like 25 cents? Probably even less than that, like 5 cents, 10 cents? In May of 1939, in which he graced the cover of Detective Comics number 27. And if you couldn't remember exactly how it looked like, it's pretty cool that even McFarlane went and took that cover and put it on the back of the DC Multiverse box that this guy comes packaged in. So I thought that was a very beautiful, nuanced, and classy touch. Even though it also kind of calls attention to which one is the more accurate one, whether it be the default one that you see before you hear or the platinum that comes with the blue gloves. I don't know what it is, but you can see right here that this is, in fact, I want to get more technical, more specific, and say that this is a DC Multiverse McFarlaneized version of the first appearance Batman. Because if you're looking for a true figure that is like one-to-one -one scale of the first appearance Batman from 1939... This is technically speaking not going to be it. He's going to be resembling that first appearance Batman as far as the suit is concerned with the little aesthetics of the very small bat symbol on the chest, the overall black and gray aesthetic, the very enlarged and rather gaudy belt that he's got going on right there, which is yellow as tradition dictates, but he's got that huge saucer looking buckle there in the middle, so it's going to be very disproportionate but in a, in a right you know a lore sort of way a lore accurate sort of way a time accurate sort of way and then he's got like i said before those purple gloves they look like surgical gloves that you get at the hospital but that's exactly what batman was sporting in some of those comic pages like i said i don't know which one is specifically accurate because some of the covers portray him with the blue gloves and then there's some other panels that actually have him with the purple gloves that you see before you're here nevertheless though they're all really well sculpted painted beautifully those those gloves, regardless of how you feel about them, I'm personally, like I said, kind of indifferent to them. I, they kind of stand out to me a little goofy, a little unorthodox. But at the same time, McFarlane makes it clear that they know how to do sculpting for clothing downright. And you can see the little creases and wrinkles on top of the glove that make it look pretty lifelike. So overall, the aesthetic of the suit is technically there. They really nail that. It's just that this is, like I said, a McFarlaneized version of that suit. They're not necessarily going to skinny down Batman to look one-to-one -one like he did in that comic. Especially when you already have a very successful buck out there that people are going to be picking up in droves. Yes, as soon as I took him out of the box and looked at those goddamn legs, I just knew exactly who I was dealing with here. This is the Hush Buck, or at least I want to say about 66 to about 70, 75 ish percent of the Hush Buck, specifically these legs. I know those bow leggedness anywhere in terms of how they kind of arch over to the sides and how incredibly difficult they are to manage and get them to stand up right specifically because of the ball joints that he's got for ankles as opposed to the cylindrical much more flush ankle pieces that McFarlane has since evolved into with recent releases so I I'm a little bummed that they still went back and just kind of you know it picked and chose specific pieces of that hush buck for the majority of this build. And if it wasn't for the first appearance kind of checkbox that I needed to tick in order to be able to kind of now have a proper, 
I guess you could say, bookend to my collection, being that, oh, this is the first appearance of Batman, and then from there, we can kind of work our way up to, like, add a proper 7-inch Adam West, should that ever come to pass, or something that's kind of in the middle, because I think there were a couple more appearances, especially with some of those black and white movies that they did, in fact, release of the Batman in theaters back in, like, the 1940s, 1950s, something like around there. I'm still kind of sort of waiting for McFarlane to see if he's ever going to do that, and it's you could almost even argue that this first appearance Batman is their way of sort of testing the waters with that. And it's just that they had to test the waters in a very murky kind of way by not necessarily delivering on a brand new buck. That's probably my biggest complaint is that it's just a hush buck once again. And for the the half of the body right here, like I said, I want to argue it's somewhere between 66 to 75% of the figure is in fact that hush buck. Even down to the abdominal area that I can definitely see, especially with the little creases. Like I said before, even though they're good at nailing those creases, they kind of become a little bit of a detriment here because it makes it easy to point out that that's in fact the hush abdomen piece right around right there, especially with the way that the creases are kind of folding right there on the oblique and ab area. And then as you take a look at some of those arms, I recognize, like I said, the little creases and the musculature that's happening alongside the shoulder and bicep area. And yeah, these are sure enough the Hush's arms. So it's only really when we get to the chest area that they decided to sculpt it in a very different kind of way where I'm like, that kind of looks like the Hush torso, Hush chest piece but kind of not, I'm honestly not 100% certain. So I'm a little out of the loop there, but I am pretty, pretty, like, I want to say 90 to 95% confident that the remainder of the limbs, torso, and crotch area are definitively lifted from Hush. So that's a bit of a bummer, but at least the chest area is different enough, specifically with the way that it kind of cuffs the shoulders into place, that it makes it stand out a little bit and kind of gives the suit that somewhat skimpier look that he had back in 1939 in those comics. However, you'd be pleased to know that the Hush Buck wasn't necessarily the first thing. It was one of the first things, but not definitively the first thing that I noted pulling him out of the package that actually kind of took my breath away, but thankfully in a positive light. And that is going to be the cape. To commemorate the first appearance of Batman, McFarlane actually went out of their way to sport not only a nylon cloth kind of cape as opposed to the usual very uh, stagnant and pre-sculpted, so to speak, molded and rubberized cape. No, instead you're dealing with, like I said, this nylon fabric, so it's not necessarily cloth 100%, and that really does fall on preference as to whether or not you prefer the cloth ones versus the nylon ones. For me, I prefer the cloth. However, the only little asterisk, the caveat to kind of bypass this and make it a little bit more digestible would be in the case such as this with First Appearance Batman, where you have the nylon, it's properly trimmed, cleaned, and even has the little bit of the wingtips here towards the bottom to make it look very bat-like. But what really did it in for me that made me go, yes, this feels legit, is on top of the fact that it feels like it's double-stitched, so it's a little thick and much more premium feel feeling, you also have very strong, firm wires at the end trims here on the two sides of the cape itself. So you can actually stretch it out to make it look like it's actually springing and flying and gliding in the air like so and sculpt it to your heart's content. And it just adds this premium quality to the figure that I'm like... Yo, McFarlane, I gotta be honest, I understand that this is supposed to be something pretty commemorative for the 85th anniversary of the first appearance Batman. But at the same time, it's kind of difficult to go back to just generic rubberized capes when you kind of raise the bar a little bit with this guy here. I really love this cape. I really want to see more evolutions like this. This is ultimately, to me, something that is a step in the right direction to justify certain price hikes when it comes to some of these figures going for $22.99, $24.99, hell, maybe even $29.99 in the case of some of the recent stuff that I've been covering, like the animated series Batman, where they're build of figures but for some reason they're 30 bucks as opposed to the traditional 25 I'm just like, okay, then you got to do something a little bit extra to the figure itself to kind of 
make it just feel a little bit worth it because we're kind of hurting over here money wise as well especially when we're taking some of the money out of our pocket to not only collect some of these figures but also review them and cover them in these formats and so this to me feels definitively worth it having a cape that you can sculpt and wire it in a way that looks very dynamic and cool and favors the poses and feels very premium in quality and also makes it very easy to take out of the package as opposed to the rubberized ones those things are sometimes a little bit of a hassle to pull out of those plastic slits that are inside of the box itself that this to me i would gladly take this over a goddamn nft any day i'm sorry but digital collectibles aren't it this is it the only drawback about this style of cape though is that of course you have to kind of futz and finesse it a little bit when it comes to kind of moving out of the wire because when you get out of the package in a, it's in a very stagnant state like this in a very pre-post sort of straight down sort of way that it looks very clean very aesthetically pleasing but once you start to pose it a little bit you're going to start to deal with an awful lot of these little loops and creases that it, it takes a little while to get it firmer in a straight line all the way down should you want to pose them in a very neutral kind of stance to make sure that the cape is not necessarily looking like it's blowing in the wind and is rather like i said neutral and controlled however that's just a minor nitpick the actual major complaint would have to be where the cape is actually assembled to the figure itself which is going to be around this collar area because the collar itself is not badly put together it's actually stitched in there quite nice it's just that it also causes a little bit of a stagnation when it comes to the neck joint which is probably the first casualty of the articulation itself you see the head sculpt here which Looks like it's lifted very much like the Hushbuck. However, they managed to modify and imprint different sculptings when it comes to the mouth plate and the head itself, especially with the elongated ears, to make it look kind of different. I feel like they changed enough that this does feel like a brand new head sculpt. The only downside to it is that it doesn't necessarily have a head joint. It has more so that elongated neck joint at the bottom. So it's all one giant piece. And even though it does a number of good things to really favor, like I said, the sculpting and the actual presentation value of the sculpt to make it look faithful to the 1939 first appearance. But on top of that, it just looks like a really good head sculpt. <laughs> they managed to make the very elongated, somewhat dopey ear looking Batman look kind of badass to be quite honest i see this in the middle of the night i'm going to be straight in my pants but unfortunately the only downside to it is that of course moving the head you only really have a limited amount of choices first of all he came pre-packaged looking down so he can definitely look down very favorably as you can see right there but he can't really look up He's actually kind of stuck looking straight forward. Looking up is not necessarily an option. That's because of the way that it's all kind of stitched together here. And because it's all one piece and it's connected at the bottom as opposed to the top of the neck, that's really kind of about it. This is definitely a figure that would have benefited from a head joint or a, a ball joint at the top of the neck as opposed to being at the bottom and, and therefore causing the entire cowl to be just all one giant piece. I think they should have reversed it to where you actually have the head separating from the neck or maybe even have two joints right there a la Mayfix or Figure Arts and really made the price even worth it to, again, like I said, favor an awful lot of neck articulation. And again, you can argue that this kind of calls back to all the different appearances of Batman where he would have stiff neck movement to have to turn his entire body to be able to look left and right but it's still an action figure i feel like this you could have taken the liberty on and as such because of the way that the cape is kind of sculpted in there turning the head left and right you can definitively even hear a little bit of the squeaking because it's actually pretty firm and strong to the point where i'm kind of scared that i even want to test Rotating at 360 degrees. You can see right there. I'm struggling to even turn it left and right and you can technically t tilt side to side but only by about that much so it's not necessarily the most fondest head joint that I've ever had to deal with and th that's a bit of a bummer because I know that maybe if they didn't press down the cape the nylon cape complete with the whole wire inside of that collar piece maybe we would have been able to bypass that but I guess that's just a trade-off we're going to have to take because of the premium uh, assertiveness so to speak of the cape itself or the implementations they had to make to ma you know, really commemorate this guy in the seven inch scale format once you get to the shoulders however because of the way that this chest piece has now been modified to kind of allow 
extra room, wiggle room, so to speak, for the shoulders, you're definitely able to rotate the arms 360 degrees vertically as well as extend them pretty generously. You even have a little bit of butterfly shoulder shrugging movement happening a little bit right there via the little washer piece that is kind of covering it up. Biceps are able to fully rotate 360 degrees, though, because of the paint, it's actually just a little bit on the stiff side, so do be careful with yours. Two joints at the elbows that are fully able to bend all the way up, and then even though it is the hush buck and it's sporting ball joints for both the ankles and the wrists, they are still able to rotate all the way around 360 as well as being able to bend inwards and outwards on not just the wrist, but I guess I'll go ahead and skip ahead to the ankles. Even though they're ball joints, you can technically pivot the foot downwards and upwards like so and technically rotate, but they are a little bit on the stiff side for mine, so do be careful there and can, they can technically incline inwards and up, outwards and the toesies could still be found there so fully able to bend all the way up and i guess on that note it's pretty obvious to see that the remainder of the articulation since it is the hush buck it's gonna pretty much play out the way that you'd expect from those other figures the mid torso cut technically can rotate all the way around 360 degrees as well as being able to slightly crunch inwards because of the way that this abdominal piece is sculpted it's gonna come into conflict with that cut right above it but it can definitely extend towards the back very generously as well as side to side side to side i'm sorry in the obliques and then the waist is a little bit tight because of how enlarged i had to make that belt but technically speaking you could still rotate the waist all the way i want to say around but i'm starting to hear a little bit of squeaking so i'm not gonna test it too much i'm a little scared especially with how high in demand this guy is currently so i don't want to really press my luck but technically you can still rotate left and right as well as being able to crunch a little forward and backward just a little extra to kind of favor the overall torso articulation as you can kind of see before you right there then the top leg joints can definitely move forwards though the diaper piece is a little stiffer than before because of how rubberized it is but technically you can still move the leg forwards and back about that far right about right there and then full almost full extension towards the sides at the 180 degree angle right about right there and two joints at the knees can fully bend all the way up as you see before you're there so as you can see the articulation inherently is not bad it's just that the two things to me that kind of I can't stop thinking about is the stagnation of the head because of the way that that color piece is assembled and how limiting it is to see that the only real way to get him to look up is to really extend. Thank God for the proper extension of the torso because that's the only real way to get him to even look up because the neck is definitively not going to be that solution. And then on top of that, knowing that so many of the joints move very favorably, don't feel all that stiff, don't feel like they're going to break or anything like that, great articulation, but it's found on a buck that has the bow legginess as I've kind of foreshadowed before and therefore even with the articulation being the way that it is it's very difficult to get them to stand properly so that's something that really still kind of brings back the point across that they really could have expanded on a different buck as opposed to just using one that is, I've already seen like what five or six times I made a whole ranking video of the hush bucks and I, I'm arguing with myself in my head should this be considered in the running for potentially creating a new ranking video and tossing in first appearance Batman there since they're utilizing the majority of those pieces? You guys let me know. Now, it stands to reason that he's not going to be coming with so many accessories, not a whole assortment of gadgets or doodads, let alone batarangs, because this is still first appearance Batman. They weren't really, Bob Kane and Bill Finger weren't really thinking that far ahead so McFarlane decided to somewhat kind of acquiesce and throw in simply just some extra hand accessories you're going to of course come with the default fisted hands on his person but on the side you're going to have these like semi clenched hands kind of like action hands with two of the fingers two of the index and middle fingers kind of extended and the other ones kind of crunched in and then these really open kind of <laughs> gel together hands very uh very swollen, swollen up hands, but of course these are meant to then be put on him whenever he's kind of in this like flying or gliding or kind of extended cape pose that I'm very much looking forward to put him in. But McFarlane even threw in another little obscure accessory that even I'm a little bewildered by, which is going to be this wrench that's decked out in this blue paint, and it's rather unorthodox. I gotta be honest, I 
didn't really read the comics that far back into 1939, but I believe that there's an issue where his only weapon of choice was to bludgeon the shit out of his enemies <laughs> with a blue wrench. So I guess McFarlane decided to kind of go back to that deep cut and throw that accessory in. So he does come with that. The only downside, though, is that as well painted and sculpted as this is, I really would have appreciated a little bit of extra detail on it. Just just a little bit of a nitpick. But to me, that's just a nitpick. The only major problem with this is that it's very difficult to get him to hold him in this semi-clenched hand because as you can see this pair of specific hands they're not really molded in a way to hold a cylindrical grip uh, to an accessory such as this so i'm like okay is it supposed to go between these fingers or is it supposed to go between between the bottom two fingers and kind of press it in there as best as possible but then it looks like he's holding it in a very awkward sort of way to me i gotta be honest it just doesn't really make an awful lot of sense i don't know i'm very seldom gonna be posing him with the wrench as a whole and part of me kind of wishes that maybe they would have sculpted some kind of hook or loop into his belt to then put it on his person and make it look like he's equipped with the with the wrench itself so that would have been a nice little touch but as it is i guess it's a little bewildering for him to come with wrench. I would have probably just taken the hand accessories and just called it a day there. Especially since this is definitively one of the McFarlane Batmans of all time. <laughs> but definitively the Batman that started it all. And if it wasn't for this first appearance Batman, we wouldn't have all of our beloved takes of the Caped Crusader, the Dark Knight himself, to this day. Whether it be Batfleck, Christian Bale... Robert Pattinson, the animated series, the Arkhamverse from Rocksteady, all of these different iterations of Bruce Wayne slash Batman that have become pillars of what we know and love about comic books, what we know and love about movies, the mythos, the legends, the iconography of Batman. None of it would exist. Now, does that inherently mean that you should go out and pick this up? Otherwise, you're not a true Batman fan. You're not a true McFarlane collector. No, that's not 100% true because after all, like I said before, they're still utilizing the bulk of the hush buck. And that combined with the weird inclusion of the wrench accessory, some better usage of the articulation, especially when, like I said, this could have been a very good opportunity to take advantage of a brand new scope, especially when you're commemorating the first appearance of Batman. And they were kind of taking really good steps in that direction with the added paint applications to make the quality of the plastic feel a little bit more premium and then of course the wired nylon cloth cape there were some really strong potential here but i feel like it's held back by again going back and playing it safe with that hush buck and because of that i'm going to be giving the first appearance batman here a 7 out of 10. it's definitely a pickup if you're a completionist if you're a very strong, very true to heart Batman fan that needs to have every single iteration of the character in McFarlane DC Multiverse format. But if you're not, and you feel it in your gut that you can kind of go without picking this guy up, should you see him in store, then that's pretty much telling of where he kind of sits as far as your priorities. Specifically with the current waves that are out there right now, whether it be with the black variant of the Nightfall Batman or the Night Send Azrael, or of course upcoming releases like the Todd Father himself and even others that are going to be going up for pre-order like Batman Forever, etc. Now, this first appearance Batman looks to be McFarlane's way of commemorating the 85th anniversary of Batman himself. What are you guys doing to celebrate Batman's 85 years of being in pop culture? Whether it be marathoning the TV series, the movies, playing through all of the video games, even some of the older ones from the NES, Super Nintendo days. I don't know yet what I'm doing personally, but I'll let you guys know at some point in the channel. I feel like it's a little too late to do it for the actual 85th anniversary that is technically in May, but I'll keep you guys posted. In the meantime, though, if you guys enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you did not, hit the thumbs down. And as always, stay humble. I'll catch you guys later.